Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel A Monk in Cloud. In today's video, I'm going to describe on how actually SSH works, that is Secure Shell. Okay, so I have documented this on my blogging site. So you can visit a monkincloud.com to read about this one, right? So without further ado, le let me explain how exactly SSH works. So you might ask me why are you explaining this on a cloud or DevOps channel? So the answer is really simple. As a cloud engineer or uh, as a DevOps engineer, you would be logging into a remote servers every day, day in, day out, right? So you should be knowing how exactly it would work. So if it if you do not know, you will be in trouble for sure because every day you will be logging into a server, right? So I'll break down and I will also show you how SSH, how to SSH into a remote server, right? So if you see here, the definition of secure shell is a really simple. Okay. Secure shell is actually a protocol which is used to securely log in to a remote computer or execute commands on that computer over an unsecured network. Right. So over the network, you will connect to the remote server. OK. And on that server, let's say you want to run something. Let's say you want to run an application. Uh, what you can do. So first you need to log into that server and then execute some command so that you can run that application. So for that, you need SSH. SSH is nothing but a protocol. SSH provides strong authentication and encryption for secure data transmission over an insecure network right so that is the main use case of ssh so what i've done is i have come up with a simple diagram i can say so that you can refer this diagram to understand it easily okay first if you see this laptop you can consider that as your client machine or your own laptop so this one you can consider as a server, a remote server. It can be an AWS EC2 instance or it can be an Azure virtual machine or a Google compute. So whatever it can be, it, it, let's assume that as a remote server. So first step, what happens when you try to establish or when you try to connect to a remote server? The first thing that's going to happen is the client initiates a connection to the server and request to establish a SSH session. The client and server agree on the version of the SSH to use. For example, let's say, assume uh, the version of SSH is 2. So both client and server should agree. Let's, okay. Okay, buddy, we'll use uh, the version 2 so that we can connect to connect each other. So that is how the first step works that is known as connection request so i'm i'm you know naming that as connection request so the client establishes the connection request first next what happens the server sends its public key to the client so this is important the server will be sending the public key to the client so this i've mentioned here the second step so the server shares the public key Next, what happens? The third step, the client verifies the server's public key by checking it against a list of th trusted keys or by prompting the user to confirm the key's fingerprint. So for all the keys, we will have something called as fingerprint. So if uh, either it will check against all the trusted keys, which is which it maintains, or it will prompt the user to confirm the keys fingerprint any of these two will take place you, if you see here the client is looking into the list of the servers or the trusted keys or it will ask for the it will prompt for the fingerprint so if it matches you you see this tick mark here then the third step is completed it will look that fourth step the client generates a session key and encrypts it with servers public key so this encrypted session is Send session key is sent to the server. What then? What happens? The client after the uh, it verifies the trusted keys and the fingerprint. After that, what happens? The client will generate something called as session key, and it encrypts that session key with the 
public key that was previously sent by the server and then what happens this this entire thing the session keys will be shared with the server fifth step what happens the server decrypts the session key which was sent by the client and acknowledges the client saying that okay boss i have received your information now let's go ahead and establish the communication right so that is the sixth step if you see here client and server now use session key for the communication if you see here the server decrypts the session key using its private key and sends an acknowledgement acknowledgement to the client sixth step the client and server now use the session key to encrypt and decrypt all the data that is sent over the ssh connection right so after that the client is now authenticated and can execute commands on the server now after that you will be able to run any commands on that particular server provided you have the right permission the client can also request port forwarding x11 forwarding or file transfers you can use uh, you know win scp to transfer the file from your local machine or from your client to the server or you can use uh, you know telnet many many different commands you can run on that server right once the session is complete right the client sends a message to the server indicating that it wishes to disconnect says it says that okay boss i'm done with my job we can disconnect as of now right so the server acknowledges the message and terminates the session so this is how the flow of your uh, ssh connection works if you see this diagram so i don't know uh, how uh, much sense this uh, diagram makes but i have tried my best to explain it in a diagrammatical way okay overall the ssh provides secure authentication and encrypted connection between two networked devices SSH is one of the widely used protocol by all the cloud and DevOps engineers to remotely access and manage servers. Bas basically, you perform administrative tasks, transfer files, and also perform other tasks that require secure access to the remote computer or an unsecured network. Right? So SSH also provides a secure and encrypted alternative to traditional remote access protocols such as telnet that transmit data in clear text so whatever the data that you transfer exactly the same data will be transferred it will not encrypt for example i'm sending abc over the network abc over the untrusted network so or unsecured network what happens if you are using telnet same abc if an attacker comes and you know watches your you know data the same context or the same text that you are sending it will be visible exactly like that but if you are using ssh the data will be encrypted so no one can understand what exactly is the data right that is you know that is uh, making them vulnerable to you know dropping and data tampering or something like that right so that is the huge advantage of ssh i hope i have uh, made clear about uh, how exactly ssh works right so if you are liking the content that i am creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends and also we have come up with a blog which you are seeing right now so we have published a lot of blogs you can go check them out and you can also share it with your friends if you see here i think every day you are going to see uh, one blog so i request you to follow and you know whenever i post a new blog you would be notified all right so that's it for this video thank you and i will see you in the next one